Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Lunchtime with the Lord. This is Tuesday's edition, and I hope you had a wonderful weekend, a long weekend for some with Labor Day. I hope you had a great Labor Day yesterday, and here we are starting our week out for Lunchtime with the Lord devotions here on this Tuesday, and I trust that your day is going well. Thank you for tuning in. We ask you to like, share this video, comment, let us know where you're watching, and if you'll see, I have a little helper running around behind me playing and with her wild hair and everything, which fits Gwen perfectly with her wild personality. And so we're going to try to get a video in today, and a, perhaps will not be as long as the other videos. <laughs> perhaps will not be as long as the other videos. But I promise it'll be entertaining if Gwen is running around in the back. It may be even more entertaining than any of the other videos we've did before. And so uh, let's start with Daniel chapter number two is where we left yeah. off. And uh, I want to invite you to get your Bible if you can. I'm going to let you up here, but you're not going to sit because you're, you're rotten. All right. Daniel chapter number two. And we're going to read verse one and verse number two today. Yeah. All right. And the Bible says, in the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams wherewith his spirit was troubled and his sleep break from him. So here's, here you can type right here. Uh, and so here's, here's what happened. Uh, the king, the king had a dream and uh, it was such a dream that it troubled him. Now chapter number two is the longest chapter in the book of Daniel. And it is a book that begins to see some of the Bible prophecies uh, that we're going to study through this, through this book and leave my Bible alone. And he said um, he had such a dream that it troubled his spirit and it broke his sleep. It woke him up. Now, as we see in verse number two, uh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar did something that uh, he would have did many times in the past and that he's going to call on all those magicians, those sorcerers to try to do uh, the task of interpreting the dream. But there's a little twist this time. Notice verse number two. Then the king commanded to call the magicians and the astrologers and the sorcerers and the Chaldeans for to show the king his dream. So they came and stood before the king. So here's what happened in uh, verse number two. In times past, uh, the normal practice where the king would have called all of his magicians and all those that were supposed to have that gift of interpretation, and they he would have told them the dream, and then they would have gave him the interpretation. But here's the twist. This time, Nebuchadnezzar, King Nebuchadnezzar, calls all of those people together. And this time, instead of saying, here's my dream, tell me the meaning, he said, you tell me the, the dream and then interpret the meaning. Now, you say, why would the king do that? Well, likely he was catching on to some of their lies and deception. I mean, it's easy to fake an interpretation if you know the dream. But if you don't know the dream and you can't produce the dream, as we'll get to in tomorrow and the next day or so, there were some stipulations, there were some consequences if these astrologers, magicians, sorcerers could not do the task, they were going to suffer because of it. And uh, the end result, of course, when we get to there is Daniel does that. But I think the reason yes, Nebuchadnezzar, yes, yes, yes. Nebuchadnezzar does this, I think he was catching, it, catching on a little bit on what they were doing. Uh, in times past, he would have told them the dream. They would have gave him some false interpretation because they had no skills at doing so. And so he's, he's figuring that out. <laughs> and now he said, you tell me the dream and then tell me the interpretation. Now, uh, of course, they're not going to be able to do that as we get to in just a little while. And, uh, and as we get to, uh, we'll see that Daniel, the Lord, enables him to do that. And we're going to see some, uh, some aspects of this dream that has some prophecy to it. What are you talking about? You see yourself in there? Can you wave? Can you tell everybody, can you blow everybody a kiss before we leave? Can you tell them bye? <laughs> hey, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. We're just going to cover two verses a day, of course, uh, with a wild child sitting on my lap today. Uh, but I hope she's been a little bit entertaining to you. And uh, like, share this video if you can. And so verse number one and verse number two is opening up for the rest of the chapter, the longest chapter in the book of Daniel. And we're going to study this this dream and the interpretation of their, uh, of that dream in, uh, in the next couple videos. And so I hope you have a wonderful rest of your Tuesday. Like, share this video. Let's reach as many folks as we can with the Word of God. God bless you. Have a wonderful rest of your Tuesday.